Am I the a-hole for scolding my struggling sister when she gives us grief about adopting a baby? My sister, 35 female, and her husband, 37 male, have been struggling with infertility since they got married 12 years ago. They've tried absolutely everything, from medical to spiritual, but unfortunately nothing works. Now that she's approaching late 30s, they're starting to look into adoption, but it's also been a slow going since their financial condition isn't exactly stable from multiple rounds of fertility treatments they went through. I can only imagine the struggle, and I sympathize with her, but the distress the situation is bringing her and her husband honestly puts a strain on our relationship. My husband and I, Beau 30, lost our best friends, Mason and his wife Kate, two weeks ago in a horrible car accident. They left behind their son, Pete, who isn't even two yet. It was so sudden and so heart-wrenching. We're all grieving, which lowers out contact with a lot of people, including my sister and brother-in-law. Our main concern right now is ourselves and Pete, whose custody has come to us because we're both his godparents, actively engaged in Pete's life since his birth, and because Mason and Kate have neither left a will nor have immediate living relatives who can take him in. We've decided to adopt Pete as soon as we can stomach the process. My husband and I never planned on having kids, and even if we did, this is absolutely not the way we want to go about it. The situation is far from ideal, but we're starting the adoption process yesterday for Pete's safety if nothing else. We broke the news to our extended families and friends, letting them know that my husband and I won't be very available for a little longer because of this. I know my sister and brother-in-law will have something to say about this. I'm prepared for a few heated text messages or voicemails. However, I didn't expect them to turn up on our doorstep, crying about how unfair it is that we were given everything they wanted and how we didn't deserve to be parents because we didn't go through what they had to. I've never seen my husband so angry before. He's usually very mild and gentle, but recent events have stretched our patience to the limits. We kicked them off of our porch, and I told my sister before she left that since our pain inconveniences her so much, I won't have her around me and my family at all anymore. I know she made a fuss about it, and now everyone has something to say to us. We turned off our phones, so we don't know which ones are cursing us and which one aren't. I know some did slash are. My husband and I are both in pain and grieving, and we can't trust ourselves to be objective. Did we go too far? Now for the top comments. Not day home. Hey, adopted kid here. I can give you tips on how to be an a-hole if you want to be, because this story inflames me anyway. Your sister and her husband, much like my parents, tried everything else before even considering adoption. That makes their future kid their very last option. They clearly would rather have their own child. This attitude disgusts me personally, but whatever, I guess that's normal for society. Pete is your first option. You sacrificed the lifestyle you wanted to have for him. You chose his life before the future you envisioned, not as a last-ditch effort. Guaranteed you'll be a better parent. You will be the a-hole if you told her this, and honestly, I encourage it. This comment is beautiful and says everything I thought and felt reading this post. I hope you're not today, Hull, and I strongly advise some major distance from this deeply selfish, narcissistic behavior from your sister and brother-in-law. Not today, Hull. I'm sorry, but that's just disgusting behavior from your sister. You got everything you wanted? Your close friends died, and you have to go through an unexpected adoption for their son who is now orphaned. I know she's stressed, but that's just horrible what she said, honestly. At the moment, I was absolutely disgusted too. My husband was too, judging from his face. Like I said, I've never seen him look at anyone like that. It's like a completely different person. I'm afraid I must have looked just like him then too. It's really shocking when you find out your family has a bunch of victims and narcissists. A tragedy happened, but no. This is about them and their baby troubles. I haven't spoken to many of my family members since I was 18 to 24. I'm now in my mid-30s as well. It's not easy, but your life is better when you surround yourself with people who actually give a damn if you're hurting or not. Get angry. Feel angry. You should be angry because what they're doing is making it about themselves when it has zero to do with them. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my nieces and nephew live with us? I, 25 female, am married to James, 31 male. 
We've been married for two years and have always planned on having maybe one child. This decision has always depended on us being financially stable. Unfortunately, James's older brother passed away suddenly about a week ago. He had three children, two girls and a boy. Their ages are three, five, and six. Their mother sadly died from complications arising from a C-section with her youngest. I've just found that we are named in James's brother's will as the ones who wants to take care of the kids. Apparently, my husband okayed this without discussing it with me, thinking that nothing would ever happen to his brother. He already knows he is unbelievably silly for doing this. I've tried to reason with him about it. We live in a miniature one-bedroom flat. It is on a main road with no garden and is completely impossible to childproof. We also cannot afford childcare, so one of us would have to stay home with the children to make it work. It would have to be me as my husband earns considerably more than me. If there was no other option, I'd try my hardest to make it work, but my husband's parents have two spare bedrooms and live in the countryside right by where the kids lived with their dad. They have experience raising children, but wants us to raise them as it is what their son wanted. They also said this is perhaps the only chance they'll get to just be grandparents, not parents. I'm trying so hard to be sympathetic, but it feels like they're asking me to sacrifice my life for them. I am not a child person naturally. I worry if I could cope with one baby, let alone three children. And due to COVID lockdowns, I barely know them. My husband and I had an explosive argument last night. I kept pointing out problems like where would the kids sleep and he just kept saying, we'll work it out. I don't know how to get through him while being sensitive over everything he has gone through. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It makes no sense him saying we'll work something out. When? Because it's happening right now and a solution needs to be found right now. Also, don't quit your job. Yeah, guess who will be doing all the working out? You OP. Yes, do not under any circumstances quit your job. Who will be looking after these kids during the day? Does he have any idea how much childcare costs? Unless your brother-in-law left a trust for these kids, say goodbye to all your hopes and dreams for your future. Raising kids is hard, time-consuming and expensive. At the minimum, these poor kids will need therapy. You have a long and hard road ahead of you raising kids who lost their parents at such a vulnerable age and who were removed from their home to live with strangers. Your husband has not thought this through at all. I'm pretty positive that if Opie removed herself from this situation, the grandparents would take those kids in. Opie's everyone's mule here. No a-holes here. This is a divorce-worthy issue for both sides. He's definitely not the a-hole for wanting to take care of his deceased brother's kids after he made a promise, and that might be relationship-breaking if you say no. However, you're also not the a-hole for not wanting to take that on since they have another place to go. If they would go into foster care, you would be a huge a-hole. But if his parents can take them, it's okay to be upset, assuming they want to take them. If you love your husband, tread carefully with us. This is one of the few instances you may not be able to come back from. If her husband loves OP, he should tread carefully. He is absolutely the a-hole for agreeing to this without discussing it with her. This is way too big of an ask for just spring on someone. Not the a-hole. They are asking you to sacrifice your life. Your brother-in-law's will stating he wanted his brother to take the children is unenforceable. Your husband casually telling his brother sure was a serious mistake. As terrible as the circumstances, your husband does not get to tell you to sacrifice your life and your plans for having your own child. He does not get to tell you that you'll be spending the next decade or two doing laundry and cooking and homework help. Those children need to go to their grandparents. If you leave your husband over this, that's probably what will happen anyway. Your husband is being completely irresponsible and unrealistic. There is no way can bring three small children into your home. Where are the children now? Did your brother make any financial arrangements like life insurance? Next story. Am I the a-hole for not sticking up for my dad's relationship because his fiancée is the same age as me? My father, 45 male, and I, 27 male, have always had a rocky relationship. As the eldest of five, have siblings including myself, different mothers, he practically made it my duty to be a good role model for them. I was forced to participate in almost every sport he could find a flyer for, as good role models stayed active. 
had to be a captain or a leader of any extracurricular I joined as good role models lead not follow. I was also not allowed to disobey my father or object to anything he said as good role models understand that their parents know best. This created some resentment amongst my siblings. I am seen as daddy's golden boy rather than daddy's exhausted, vicariously lived through child. Recently, however, my father has set his sights on someone else. A woman. Let's call her Kit. Kit is nice enough. It's just that she and I are the same age. And I find that creepy. The only person I've voiced my opinion to is my older middle brother, Peter. Peter and I also have a rocky relationship, but we've found common ground on this matter. Peter suggested I tell our father how it felt as soon as I shared my thoughts with him, but I always brushed him off. That was until our family brunch yesterday. My father gleefully announced his plans to make Kit a permanent member of our family. They were engaged. He had proposed a previous night. I guess my brothers and I were not as excited as my father and Kit hoped would be, and they both became visibly upset. My dad demanded to know what the issue was. My eldest sibling instinct kicked in. I was about to try and defuse the situation, but Peter spoke first. The issue? The issue is she's the same age as your eldest child. My father and kids were stunned. They looked at me before my father spoke again. Well, Opie doesn't have an issue with it, do you, Opie? The last part wasn't a question. He expected me to comply per usual. I didn't say anything, though, as I didn't want to offend and upset him any further. But I didn't want to stick up for him, either. I felt bad for Kit as she was visibly embarrassed and quickly left the room. My father chased after her, and my brothers and I took that opportunity to collect our belongings and leave his home. Later that evening, he sent me a message letting me know how disappointed and hurt he was after I didn't stand up for him and Kit. He told me I wasn't acting like the role model he and my mother had raised me to be. But as the most worldly of my siblings, I spent my junior year abroad. I should know better. I didn't respond to his message. I asked anyone else if they'd received anything and the collective answer was no. I feel horrible. On the one hand, I believe people should be allowed to love who they love. On the other hand, Kit was probably in dire purse the same time I was. I love my dad and he has done a lot for me over the years. But I'm 27 and tired of being his good role model. So am I the a-hole for not sticking up for my dad? Now for the top comments. How much longer are you going to allow your father to manipulate you? That was going to be my question. It seems to me that Opie has allowed himself to be manipulated his entire life. Now that he is an adult, it is on him to set the boundaries. I fear that Opie doesn't even know himself because he's been told what to do for his entire life. I'm surprised he got to his age without having blown up. Generally, I would have thought that, once he got to his mid-teens, he would have rebelled against all of this. Eh, people thought I would blow up way earlier too. I didn't because I grew up in the evangelical church, so I was always had an intense underlying fear that my parents would just straight up get rid of me like a bag of puppies in the river if I rebelled. I think sometimes people get into that internalized helplessness loop just because 18 years is so long with no other examples around. And if you're afraid of not being fed slash getting hurt, etc., it quickly gets stuck home syndrome. You're the a-hole. But not for what you think. You're the a-hole because you are a peacemaker and conflict avoider. You never stick up for your values or what is right. On top of that, you still allow yourself to be used as pawn in your father's control and dare I say emotional abuse of your siblings. It is time to figure out who you are and live your life by your own rules. Stop worrying about upsetting your father. Stick for what is right. Reading No More Mr. Nice Guy really helped me on this front. Last story. Am I the a-hole for ignoring my half-sister for transferring into my school? So, I-18 female was pretty much abandoned by my own mom when I was a baby. She moved on with a new guy and had two kids, Tia 15 female and Ed 13 male. We all have the same last name because mom didn't marry my dad or their dad. When I was seven, they moved away and my mom never called or anything. She just phoned on my birthday if she remembered it and sent birthday cards with a cash and a picture of her and her family. I saw my grandma till last year when she died, because my dad didn't want me to lose a link to my mom. After grandma died, my mom got her house and they moved back, and their kids got admitted into the same school I go to. Okay, well, we're in all different grades, so it shouldn't be an issue as I can just avoid them. 
Well, apparently Tia was really good at basketball, so somehow she gets on the seniors team even though usually it's only grade 12s and 11s. Tia and Ed have reached out to me. But I quickly stopped acknowledging them at all beyond passing to her during a game because I don't want to be their sister. They have their perfect family and I don't want any of it anymore. Like it sucks so much to see my mom come to our games, drop her off and cheer her on when I never got any of that. Honestly, I dip from games right away if I see her in the stands because I don't want to talk to her. Things kind of came to a head this week because they were taking photos for the yearbook for the basketball team and they were taking them alphabetical order based on last name. I do not want to even show up next to her in the yearbook. So when they lined us up, I told the PE teacher I was getting my surname changed to my dad's last name and got my place switched. Tia got really upset with me. And after the photos, tried arguing with me and I just got mad and told her to go complain to her mom. And she just called me an a-hole for never wanting to be her sister. My friends are split, with some saying I should give her a chance at least to avoid making things awkward at school. And my dad tells me I should reach out to my mom. But my cousins are all on my side and told me I did the right thing. And so, school is kinda tense so far today because of it. I don't really know, so I'm coming here to find out if I'm the a-hole. Oh, and since I always see people say get therapy on here, I see a psychologist for my issues. Not day haul. You've been through a lot with your mother abandoning you, so it's normal not to want her children in your life. At 18 years old, you were living your teenage years, and it is not up to you to have to mend fences. Opie, you're not a haul, but you're also taking out your mom issues on your bio siblings, and that's not okay. You should treat them with the kindness and respect you'd treat any of your other fellow students at the school. I suggest you take them both aside at lunch and tell them that you have nothing against them, but you don't feel like a sibling to them and you're not interested in a sibling relationship. You expect them to respect your position and on your side there are no hard feelings. Not day haul. If grandma didn't die, mom wouldn't have gotten the house. The kids wouldn't have transferred to your school and none of you would have been in contact with each other like it had been your entire life. If she wanted to be your friend and sister, why didn't she try for a relationship before all of this? Yeah, it's not like I don't have Instagram or Snap or even freaking Xbox Live. I can't even go back to my grandma's house because they all live there now. That sucks so much. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I got everything that was left to me in her will. But it sucks not knowing what happened to my room there and not being able to remember my grandma where she lived and all. 